Uh, very warm welcome once again. And uh, it's a uh, rainy season, so if uh, you don't hear me well, you will bear with me, but uh, I'll try as much as possible to make sure that uh, I'm audible. So welcome to our continued series on uh, the dress reform. And uh, this hour, I'm just going to look at factors to consider when choosing clothes, factors to consider when uh, choosing clothes. And so I pray that uh, the Lord will continue blessing us and uh, speak to our hearts wherever we are. And we may humble ourselves and submit to the will of God because it is the only best thing that we can do. He is for us and not against us. Shall we give thanks to the Lord? Again, our Heavenly Father, glory and honor be unto thy name. Thank you for the rains. Thank you for your presence. And thank you for every good gift that cometh from thee through your Son. And so we pray that uh, even this hour, that you may work through these uh, technical instruments, that we may be able to listen to your word and that you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we, we don't just uh, buy dress for the sake of buying dress. More so with uh, our religion, there's much to talk about when uh, talking about dress. And so I have just um, thought it um, well to go through this uh, so that uh, the Lord may speak to us once again in this session when uh, we are in a time when people do not respect God at all. And not only do they not respect God, but also they do not respect themselves and they do not respect their neighbors. And so people are careless in their appearance and uh, everyone wants to live like an island. Now, I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking to uh, the people who know the truth and are professing to be Christians. Whichever denomination you are coming from, this is essential for all of us, but more so to Seventh-day Adventists who are saying that they are the light of the world. Uh, what are the factors that we should be considering when um, uh, choosing, or, um, uh, choosing our clothes? Uh, what qualities does the Bible teach uh, our clothes should represent? This is so important because we were told that um, any vanity in dress, any vanity in dress uh, should uh, cause the church to discipline its members, whether men or women, or uh, they should be suspended from uh, the congregation. They should be suspended from the uh, congregation. This is how important this topic is. This is how important this topic is. And uh, we might consider well the things that um, we are going to listen. The Bible teaches modest in dress in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. 1 Timothy 2.9. This uh, forbids displaying dress, gaudy colors, profuse ornamentation. Any device uh, designed to attract attention or excite admiration is excluded from the modest apparel which God enjoins. This is CT 302, uh, paragraph one. And paragraph two says, our dress is to be inexpensive, not with gold or pearls or costly array. Money is a trust from God. It is not ours to expend for the gratification of pride or um, ambition. Now, uh, again, we read, but our clothing, while modest and simple, should be of good quality, of becoming colors and suited for service. It should be chosen for durability rather than display. It should provide warmth and proper protection. City 302, paragraph uh, 4. If uh, you are wondering, I'm reading from um, CT, and that is uh, counsels to parents, teachers, and uh, students. Counsel to parents, teachers, and students. Uh, in uh, 303.2, in all respects, the dress should be healthful, 
above all things God desires to be in health. Third John uh, verse 2. Health of body and of soul. Both are promoted by healthful grace. It should have the grace, the beauty, the appropriateness of natural simplicity. So what factors should be considered while choosing our clothes? In order to secure the most healthful clothing, the needs of every part of the body must be carefully studied. The character of the climate, the occupation must all be considered and the surroundings. The condition of the health, the age and every article of grace should fit easily, obstructing neither the circulation of the blood nor all uh, nor a free full natural respiration uh, counsels to teachers uh, in parents, page 306, paragraph 2. Should Christian wear ornaments and plait their hair? Um, this is, um, this is, I presume, MYP 354. Uh, MYP 354. This is MYP 354.1. Just uh, allow me to do this. MYP messages to young people. Messages to young people. And uh, this is uh, what um, we are told. This is what we are told. Should Christian wear ornaments and uh, plait their hair? Whose adorning let it not be that of outward of the hair and of wearing gold or of putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man, man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great uh, price, great price. And so the mass of professed Christians utterly disregard the teachings of the apostles and wear gold, pearls, and costly array. So doing those things which have been forbidden in um, uh, in uh, First Timothy is actually transgressing against the direct commandment of God. Should we then be following? Uh, in M MYP 350.2, 3.2, a modest godly woman will dress modestly, a refined taste, cultivated mind will be revealed in the choice of a simple, appropriate attire. The young women who break away from the slavery of fashion will be ornaments to society. In 3.9.2, messages to young people, their clothing will be neat, not gaudy, modest, and arranged upon the person with order and taste. In the same book, messages to young people, Page 352, paragraph 1, our dress should be cleanly, and cleanness in dress is unhealthful, and thus defiling the body and to the soul. Ye are the temple of God. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. In Isaiah 4, 4, we are told, by the way, how long do those that play take before they, they wash their heads again and eat filthy habits? So, uh, we are told that um, many of these people who play it, actually, they take time before uh, they take time before they wash their hair, before they wash their hair. And this is uh, actually filthiness to some degree because we are told to be clean. Cleanness is next to uh, godliness. And so uh, it is apparent if uh, our hairs are plated, it will take time before actually wash it. And then uh, it is um, a means of um, uh, uh, retaining germs on our body. Think you, if our Savior was upon the earth, he would point to them as being the salt of the earth and the light of the world? No, never. Christians are elevated in their conversation, and although they believe it to be a sin to condescend to foolish flattery, they are courteous, kind, and benevolent. In their dress, they avoid superfluity and display, but their clothing will be neat, not gaudy, modest, and arranged upon the person with order and taste, with order and taste. So 
uh, that is what we are being told that um, our clothing should be like our clothing should be like again we are told are uh, there some preferred colors for our clothing ct302.4 but our clothing while modest and simple should be of good quality of becoming colors and suited for service still their collection of plain colors and the modest and neat arrangement of their clothing is worthy of imitation by christian to a same for 73.2 in 1T, uh, 457 paragraph 3, 1T, 457 paragraph 3, uh, this is um, what um, we read. There is an increasing, should we dress in opposite gender clothes? Uh, we are told there is an increasing tendency to have women in their dress and appearance as near like the other sex as possible and to fashion their dress very much like that of men, but God pronounced it abomination. Those who feel called out to join the movement in favor of women's rights and the so-called dress reform might as well sever all connection with the third angel's message. The spirit that attends one cannot be in harmony with the other. The scriptures are playing upon the relations and rights of men and women. Again, in the same one T, in the same one thing, uh, this is uh, what uh, again we read. There is still another style of dress which is adopted by a class of so-called dress reformers. They imitate the opposite sex as nearly as possible. They wear the cap, pants, vest, coat, and boots, the last of which is the most sensible part of the costume. It is not modest apparel, and it's not at all fitting for modest, humble women who profess to be Christ followers. God's prohibitions are lightly regarded by all who advocate being away with the distinction dress between males and females. There is but one woman in a thousand who clothes her limbs as she should. Whatever may be the length of the dress, their limbs should be clothed as thoroughly uh, as men's. And here we are asking the question, do women have something to cover their limbs as the men's are? So their limbs should be clothed as thoroughly as the men's. This may be done by wearing linen pants gathered into a band and fastened above the angle or made full and tempering at the bottom. And this should come down long enough to meet the shoe. The limbs and the angles thus clothed are protected. And we went through presentation number three, number two, on this issue so much you can revisit that in 2sm 473.1 if the feet and the limbs are kept comfortable with warm clothing the circulation will be equalized and the blood will remain pure and healthy because it is not chilled or hindered in its natural passage through the system women should clothe their limbs with regard to health and comfort their feet and limbs need to be clad as warmly as men's. And so uh, that is what we are being told that um, just as um, the men wears their clothes, actually it should be uh, also, they should wear clothes that uh, are warm and uh, they should clothe their limbs as even men wear uh, or uh, cover their limbs. And so let us look at the pictures and how these dresses should be worn. Now, these are the trousers which were suggested. And uh, this is the clothing of a woman. And then she has a trouser inside and we have then at her angle, this uh, band that uh, really uh, makes her legs uh, comfortable. This is the short dress. This is not the this dress on the left. The one on the right is a short dress, by the way. And, you know, the servant of the Lord was shown what is on the left, but they started reducing their long dresses and they became short and shorter until the dress was reaching at the knees and then the trouser was being seen. The dress was later rejected. The, the one on the left, 
it was later rejected by the Lord because the skirt grew shorter and shorter. As you can see on the right, it started to grow shorter. It was replaced with the less objectionable dress, which consisted of a skirt that covered the whole length of the trouser. So instead of having the trouser, it was replaced by a cloth uh, or clothes which covered the whole length of the trouser. Mark the following well then. The difference between men and women must be obviously seen from as far as the human eye can possibly see. Just as they are different in morphology, they must be dressed differently. Modest cars cover the feminine body more modestly than any modest trouser ever can. Should our clothes sweep the ground? In uh, Christian teachings, um, um, to teachers and parents, counsels on teachers and parents, we read, one of fashions, wasteful and mischievous devices is the skirt that sweeps the ground. And cleanly, uncomfortable, inconvenient, and helpful, all this and more is true of the trailing skirt. It is extravagant both because of the superfluous material required and because of the needless wear on account of it is length. Again, our tight fitting clothes are advisable. Remember what you are looking at, the qualities to look at while choosing the dress. Are tight fitting clothes advisable? Of late years, the dangers resulting from uh, compression of the waist have been so fully di discussed that few can be ignorant in regard to them. Yet so great is the power of fashion that the evil continues. By this practice, women are women and young girls are doing themselves untold harm. Um, we saw painful cramps, problems in delivery, and um, uh, constricted um, uh, uh, waste, which uh, brings some uh, uh, even um, uh, yeast accumulation in the body. The form should not be compressed in the least with the corsets and the whalebones. The dress should be perfectly easy that the lungs and the heart may have healthy action. 2SM 473.1. In 2SM 473.1, again, there are many errors in the present style of female dress. It is injurious to health and therefore a sin for females to wear tight corsets or whalebones or to compress the waist. These have a depressing impact upon the heart, liver, and lungs. The health of the entire system depends upon the healthy action of uh, the respiratory organs. In 1T460.2, which length is modest? If women wear the dresses as to clear the filth of the streets and injure too, their dresses will be modest and they will be clean much more easily and will wear longer. Were they to exchange the extreme long dress for the extreme short one? Um, the American costume, we are told, that the dress should not be short, the dress should not be long. It should not be the one that is sweeping the ground. It should not be one that starts revealing the women morphology. What constituted the American costume? I promise to talk about this. In 1T459.7 and 458.4, we read, they imitate the opposite sex as nearly as possible. They wear the cap, pants, vest, coat, and boots, the last of which is the most sensible part of um, the costume. Now, let us just look at um, the American costume then. The American costume, uh, how it looked like, how it looks like. So, um, now, I need uh, some the early eighteen hundreds American costume. Some of uh, the pictures, um, I have one here. And so let us look at um, the American costume. On the, on, the, on the right, if 
first of all, let us read uh, what is here. They imitate the opposite sex as nearly as possible. They wear the cap, pants, vest, coat, and boots. That is the American costume, how it looked like. You can see on my right how the American costume looked like. And this is how women started wearing their clothing, which the messenger of the Lord said it was an abomination back to the presentation. We do not think it in accordance with our faith to dress in the American costume, to wear hoops or to go an extreme in wearing long dresses which sweep the sidewalks and the streets. Let us look at the hoops then. Let us look at um, the hoops. Um, and uh, one of them uh, will be that and then I'll just show you um, what it looked like. And so here you have the hoop dress. On my far right, you can see it's the white clothing. This is the hoop. Another one is there. And another one is there. And here we have a woman wearing the hoop dress. And so you see it can sweep over the floor. It, it is so large that sometimes you have to hold it. And um, it uses a lot of material to come with it. This dress can, uh, you, from this dress, you can have two dresses, by the way, or two skirts, as you can see it. And so it's a waste of uh, material. And we are told that... Uh, we do not think it is in accordance with our faith to dress in the American costume, to wear hoops, or to go on extreme in wearing long dresses which sweep the sidewalks of the street. I hope that uh, we are following these things. And uh, it is women who are mostly affected by these things. By the way, I, I want to use in quotes the word careless. Men are sometimes careless in what they wear. They are not mindful um, if they have two clothes and they can just wear them as long as they are neat, but women have uh, this tendency of uh, just imitating everything that comes on the face of the earth, most of those who are not converted in the heart. American costume and the bloomer costume. It was advocated by the feminist of the day, masculine trousers, boots, and jacket with very short skirt. True, it certainly was better for health, but God said it was an abomination, too much like a man. It was also worn by the spiritualist movement. Even then, Satan was mixing health and spiritism. And so you see the American costume, how as time went by, it reduced and reduced and reduced until now it was just a trouser and a coat. It started growing shorter and shorter until nothing was left. On the far right, it was almost this. The second far right, it started to shorten. And then the picture next to the words, it shortened completely until you are just having a woman with a coat and then a trouser. Key points to note are the following. The trousers are masculine. The skirts are short, just flying about the knees. They are spiritualistic. Not fit at all for those who profess the fear of the living God. Imagine holy angels dressing like that. Women cannot wear trousers alone and still be accepted of the Lord as dressed modestly and different from the men. But how do they dress today, even professed Christian? This is something that um, we should ask ourselves. How does the woman of today actually dress? What is her motivation? What is uh, her motivation in uh, what actually she wears? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Deuteron more on Deuteronomy 22.5. So what about women and pants? As we have seen, they cannot wear pants alone, but this is how they should wear the pants if at all they have to wear the pants. In 1 T4 60.3, we read, Whatever may be the length of the dress, their limbs should be closed as thoroughly as at the men's. This may be done by wearing linen pants, gathered into a band and fastened above the angle, or made full and tapering at the bottom, and this should come down long enough to meet the shoe. 
the limbs and angles thus clothed are protected against a current of air. If the feet and limbs are kept comfortable with warm clothing, the circulation will be equalized and the blood will remain pure and healthy because it is not chilled or hindered in its natural passage through the system. And remember this linen pants, we should have a dress on top of it reaching almost to the angle. Again, women and pants, I was reading from 1T460.3. The Healthful Reformer, May 1, 1872, paragraph 3 and 4. Women and pants, we advocate that the limbs of women should not be exposed, but sensibly, neatly, and comfortably clad. Is this immodest? Many say they have no objections to the length of the dress, but they could never put on the pants. They do not blush to witness the exposure of the almost naked limbs, but the limbs thoroughly dressed with warm pants shock their modesty. Such opposition to the pants, which are positively modest and which protect the limbs from exposure and chilliness, should be supported by sensible reasons. So if you are going to say that women should not wear pants uh, to cover their limbs and then put on the clothing uh, downwards, then you must give a proper reason. You should support it with a sensible reason. Many say, oh, the pants look so singular. Everybody stares and women nudge one another and look so comical and some laugh outright. Wait reasons this, it is not among the possibilities to get up anything so deforming and uh, uncomfortable as the harm fashion places on the backs of women. This and the looped, puffed and ruffled overskirts are devoid of taste and beauty. But these things are tolerated because they are fashionable. That is, the loops, the puffs, the ruffles, overskirts, they are tolerated because they are fashionable. But then people laugh at women who wear pants at the angles length and put the dress on top of it because they think that it is objectionable. Now, how could these slaves of such a hideous uh, fashions reasonably laugh at any man of dress they should behold? Uh, our work shall be, by the grace of God, to preserve simplicity of dress and stand with moral independence in defiance of fashions that have no regard for natural beauty or physical law. Again, women and pants, HR, May 1, 1872, paragraph 13. The limbs should be clothed with pants always cut after an approved pattern made tapering to meet the instep of the shoe. Oh, it looks so to see women with pants, what will people say? I'll die before I'll wear them. We shall continue to wear the reform dress. So even if people laugh at it, it is about your health. It's not about the fashion or what is uh, 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 the uh, the view or uh, the popular uh, uh, likes of the people. In uh, paragraph 16 of the same book, we plead for the warm linen pants in winter that the blood may be induced to the extremities, that they may not, by scanty clothing, be robbed of their due proportion of blood. The current of human life is struggling to go. It is accustomed rounds and should not be hindered in its circuit through the body by the imperfect manner in which women clothe their limbs. We cannot see where in the reformed dress we recommend is unbecoming. True, it is not fashionable, but what of that? Fashions do not always come from heaven, neither do they always come from the pure, the vicious, and the good. This is number three in the series, the dress reform, and we are looking at uh, the qualities to consider when um, uh, choosing your clothing. How should we dress for church worship? And this is a question that um, we ought to answer. How should we dress for uh, church worship. Messages to the young people 349.2 and 2SM 474.2. A special care should be taken to dress in a manner that will show a sacred regard for the Holy Sabbath and the worship of God. And remember what we read in uh, the book of uh, Exodus chapter 28 verses 1, 2 to 4, that the clothing of uh, the people who come to the sanctuary should be for one, glory, two, for beauty, and three, for covering the nakedness. All who meet upon the Sabbath to worship God should, if possible, have a neat, well-fitting, comely suit to wear in the house of worship. It is a dishonor to the Sabbath and to God and his house for those who profess that the Sabbath is holy of the Lord 
and honorable to wear the same clothing upon the Sabbath that they have worn through the week while laboring upon their farms when they can obtain a uh, uh, other. So if you can obtain another clothes for the Sabbath, have even one suit for the Sabbath, which is especially dedicated for that. And uh, if you cannot afford, then we are told that um, the Lord will accommodate these people, but um, those who can afford and they can't do what is wanted to be done, actually the Lord regards them as Sabbath breakers. They assemble in his house, which is as the audience chamber of the Most High, where heavenly angels are in attendance, with but little respect or reverence as their clothing indicate. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 475, paragraph 1, 2SM, 475, uh, paragraph 1. In 474.2, better if they had ever remained outside the ranks of God's loyal people. The house of God is dishonored by such a professors. This is the how important the issue of dress is. They assemble with God's people upon the Sabbath with their clothing dusty and soiled and even with gaping rents in them and placed upon their person in a slovenly manner. This class, if they had an engagement to meet a friend honored by the world, will exert themselves to appear in his presence with the best apparatus that could be obtained. But when they come into the house of the Lord, you find that they are careless in the choice of the dress, the colors, the length, and um, uh, the appropriateness of uh, the solemn service they are attending. For his friend will feel insulted, insulted were they to come into his presence with hair uncombed and garments uncleanly and in disorder. Yet these persons think that it is no matter in what dress they appear or in what condition of their persons when they meet upon the Sabbath to worship God. Child Guidance 428. What is the daily practice of those that disregard this instruction? In MYP 359.1, Demoralizing extravagance prevails everywhere and uh, souls are going to ruin because of their love of dress and display. The life of nine-tenths of those who are devotees of fashion is a living lie. Deception, fraud is their daily practice for they wish to appear that which they are not. And uh, what we saw that, um, uh, and uh, I'd like just to remind us why this issue of uh, uh, clothing is so important. Uh, why this issue is so important, the issue of um, dress, because uh, this is what it has done to some people. In uh, Review and Herald, June 2, 1891, paragraph 8, uh, I'll share my screen. This immodesty in clothing, this is what it has caused. Great neglect has been shown in the matter of bringing our church members up to the standard of the Bible in this matter. After admonition, after time for Bible study and reflection, those who are walking contrary to the scriptures and will not reform should be suspended from the church. The church is weakened, her power is enfeebled, her influence is limited because church members fail to live in accordance with the directions of the Bible. The example of those who follow the fashions of the world has a disastrous effect upon other members of the church. Many seek to imitate the dress of those who go, uh, who go into extravagance uh, on this matter. Those who cannot afford to make the display feel that the contrast between their simplicity and the, and the fashion of their sisters is too sharply defined. In seeking to make the contrast less striking, they conform to the world and expend their little all on dress. They give time and effort to make an appearance which they consider more respectable and often sacrifice health, happiness, and the favor of God for the sake of dressing, as do others who are not following the directions of the word of God. Now look, another issue that comes in when the clothing of others are not in accordance to the Bible standard. Some of our sisters have been so sensitive over the contrast between their appearance and that of their more dressy sisters that they have refused to come to church on the Sabbath day. And so uh, some souls 
loss will be traced to somebody's dress. Your dress can make people not come to the Sabbath. So it has a demoralizing influence and uh, uh, actually it's a living lie. How do women often tempt men? Again, uh, women are too often tempters. On one pretense or another, they engage the attention of men, married or unmarried, and lead them on until they transgress the law of God, till their usefulness is ruined and their souls are in jeopardy. Letters to Young Lovers, page 74, paragraph 5. If women will only elevate their lives and become workers with Christ, there will be less danger through their influence, but with their present feelings of unconcern in regard to home responsibilities and in regard to the claims that God has upon them, their influence is often strong in the wrong direction. Their powers are dwarfed and their work does not bear the divine impress. Adventist Home, page 333, paragraph 1. Continued on, the women in this age, both married and unmarried, too frequently do not maintain the reserve that is necessary. They encourage the attentions of single and married men and those who are weak in moral power will be ensnared. Thoughts are awakened that would not have been if woman had kept her place in all modesty and sobriety. Let us to Young Lovers, page 74, paragraph 3. Um, by being circumspect, reserved, taking no liberties, receiving no unwarrantable attentions, but preserving a high moral tone and becoming dignity, much evil might be avoided. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs to be that offenders come, but woe to that man by whom the offend uh, comes. And so, a uh, woe is uh, pronounced upon the world and the offenses therein, but then we are told that a um, uh, uh, woe is. Uh, pronounced upon that person who causes their brethren to stumble. Woe unto the world because of offenders, for it must needs to be that offenders come because of sin, but woe to them that man, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. So if you dress to make your friends fall and lead them, into the past that they should have never been led. If you had not dressed like that, we are told that a war is pronounced upon you. Are you shopping at certain small? Then in Adventist home, page 404, paragraph one, those who have that wisdom which is from God must become fools in the sinful knowledge of this age in order to be wise. They should shut their eyes that they may see and learn no evil. Again, influence of the basic books and pictures. Many of the young are eager for books. They read everything they can obtain. Exciting love stories and impure pictures have a corrupting influence. Novels are eagerly perused by many, and as the result, their imagination becomes defiled. In the cast, photographs of females in a state of nudity are frequently circulated for sale. These disgusting pictures are also found in Daggerin salon, salons, that is photoshops, and are hung upon the walls of those who deal in engravings. This is an age where, when corruption is teeming everywhere, the lust of the eye and corrupt passions are aroused by beholding and by reading. The heart is corrupted through the imagination. The mind takes pleasure in contemplating scenes which awaken the lower and better passions. And uh, when we are talking about uh, um, a mind being aroused to contemplating upon um, or to awaken the lower or better passions, just because of the dress and women looking nude, people have ended up in uh, uh, the scene of self-abuse, that is masturbation. These vile images seen through defiled imagination corrupt the morals and prepare the deluded, infatuated beings to give loose rein to lustful passions. Then follow sins and crimes which drug beings formed in the image of God down to a level with the beast, singing them at last in perdition. This is child guidance, page 439, paragraph 2. 
Avoid reading and seeing things which will suggest impure thoughts. Cultivate the moral and intellect powers. 2 T 410 paragraph 1. The beat, tafrija, and all this trace of music, grapevine, extreme music. These are the things. And uh, when um, women appear on these uh, shows, when the women appear in these shows, they are just nude they, they, they it, it doesn't seem like they have any clothing on them they are just like that and so let us read uh, some text as um we try to bring this uh to a close uh though we have some few slides could you be a lover of soap operas where these evils are propagated by beholding we become changed into that image could you be a tailor designing and making these fashionable clothes it is deeper than you had previously thought. Habakkuk 2.15, change then is mandatory. In Ezekiel 23, 13, 14, and 23, and in Isaiah 33, this kind of um, grace, this kind of luring people into sinning is prohibited by the word of God. And so um, think about, are you... Uh, brother's keeper or uh, are you one of uh, the people being used by Satan himself uh, in uh, SD that is uh, uh, in SD that is sons and daughters of God we read uh, thus there is no use in telling you that you must not wear this or that. For if the love of these vain things is in your heart, you are laying off your adornments will only be like cutting the foliage of a tree. The inclination of the natural heart will again assert themselves. You must have a conscience of your own. And uh, in the beginning, um, in the beginning, when I started this presentation, I put a disclaimer that Sister White says that let us not hammer the issue of grace reform on the people. We should preach Jesus Christ, and when the hearts are converted, then we shall have just a people changing in the outside naturally because the inside has been illuminated by the light from Jesus Christ himself. And she says that uh, the reason she apologizes for touching on the issue of dress reform. Why does she touch on it? It is because not one in a, a hundred or a thousand of those ladies who profess to be Seventh-day Adventists, none clothed themselves as it should. And that is why she says, I apologize for touching on the dress reform once again. Something that she had said, it should not be hammered on the people and we should not be hammering upon it I, I i pray that what i'm doing is not hammering on any person but just giving information so that uh, we may be transformed for my people perish because of the lack of uh, knowledge just where the conscience of the bible christian wants him to forbear to deny himself to stop just there the whirling steps over the line to indulge his selfish propensities so as the Bible says, do not do this, that is where their, their rebellion starts. On one side of the line is the self-denying follower of Jesus Christ. On the other side of the line is the self-indulgent world lover, pandering in fashion, engaging in frivolity, and pampering himself in forbidden pleasures. On this side of the line of the Christian cannot go. It is no place for him. Sons and Daughters of God, page 292, paragraph 4. Again, how should Christian weddings be? Very interesting. Um, and uh, I just uh, pray that uh, these things may resonate with us. Um, these things may resonate with us. And so how should uh, uh, Christian weddings be? In uh, pamphlets 202, page 202, paragraph 2, and the, in AH Adventist home page, um, Adventist home page 101, we read, the wedding ceremony is a uh, sacred service, not a time for hilarity. It has always seemed so very inappropriate to me to see the marriage ordinance associated with hilarity and glee, 
and a pretense of something. No. It is an ordinance ordained of God to be looked upon with the greatest solemnity. As the family relation is formed here below, it is to give a demonstration of what they shall be. The family in heaven above, the glory of God is ever to be made first. Now, this issue of weddings and uh, the dress reform, the issue of um, weddings and dress reform, the wedding on earth should represent the wedding of Jesus Christ and his church. When he comes to take his church, the church is adorned in fine linen. Notice that in Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, and it is just symbolic of the righteousness of, of uh, the saints. So literally they have the fine linen and they are clothed with the garments of uh, the glory of God, the light, which Adam and Eve had, they were not naked, they had no artificial garment, but they were uh, clothed with the light of God for both uh, protection and um, for the extreme weather. And so when you look at um, the, the wedding of the Lamb and the church, you cannot compare with the weddings that we have on this earth where people become come to be given to their husbands when they are already nude. But when Christ comes to take the church, it will be clothed with the fine linen, both literally and um, uh, as a symbolic of uh, the, uh, the, the, the character of the church. And so, and sometimes you go ahead and do these we weddings with uh, these clothes which are un, uh, unbefitting. And then we think that uh, when the people come into the family, they can change. Change cannot happen when you started entertaining errors. Errors must be corrected before you make another step in life. Otherwise, you will carry that into the wedding. And then when you reach in the whole house, changing such a things will be a very, very difficult thing. So if these errors are not corrected before the wedding day, they you will go through a very painful process to try changing them when you are already in marriage. Uh, and... Uh, some have a burden, some have had a burden in regard to the wearing of a marriage ring, feeling that the wives of our ministers should conform to this custom. All this is unnecessary. Not one penny should be spent for a circlet of gold to testify that we are married. In countries where the custom is imperative, we have uh, in, the, in, the, in the countries where it is imperative, then um, uh, this is actually allowed. We have no burden to condemn those who have their marriage ring. Let them wear it if they can do so consensually. And so this is the issue in these uh, countries where actually it is a law. It is a law for people to have the wedding ring, then uh, let them have it because it's a law. But uh, Wearing a wedding ring will not assure if you are married or not. It will not make you any more faithful. No money should be spent or on these things to show that um, somebody uh, is married. Again, Pride and extravagant, is it a sin to disregard this instruction then? Pride and extravagant in dress is a sin to which women is especially prone. Hence, the injunction of the apostle relates directly to her. Um, confirm with the Ecclesiastes 7, 25 to 29. Ecclesiastes 7. Let us just go there. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 7.25, uh, we are told, I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands, who so pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, this I have found, said the preacher, counting one by one to found out the account, which yet by my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those 
have I not found? Lo, this only have I found that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many invention. What people are seeking right now are inventions instead of um, the expressed will of God. Uh, instead of people following after the express, expressed will of God, they go after things which are vanity. In uh, Messages to Young People, page 357, it is one thing to join the church and quite another thing to be united to Christ. And consecrated, well-loving professors of religion are one of the most serious causes of weaknesses in the church of Christ. The influence of believer will be tenfold greater if men and women who accept the truth, who have been formerly careless and slack in their habits, will be so elevated and sanctified through the truth as to observe habits of neatness, order, and good taste in their dress. Our God is a God of order and is not in any degree pleased with destruction, with filthiness, or with sin. And so you find that people just dress for destruction. They don't dress for glory, beauty, and covering their nakedness, but to distract other people. And so every one of us, what is happening? Jesus is watching your church, your pastor, your elder, your saint. And are we seeing all these abominations? Are we seeing all these uh, abominations that are happening uh, among us? Or um, have we closed our eyes to the reality? Have we closed our eyes to the reality? In uh, 1T... 457.1, 1T, 457.1, let the sisters adopt the American costume and they will destroy their own infant and that of their husbands. We are the salt of the earth and if uh, the salt loses its saltness, then it has nothing but to be thrown and trampled down. So when uh, you actually wear indecently, you are not only a reproach to the church, but you are a reproach to your husband, you are a reproach to your children, and you are a reproach to your profession. Messages to the Young People, page 354, paragraph 2. Paragraph 2, we read, Human reason have ever sought to evade or set aside the simple direct instruction of the word of God. Departure from the teachings of the gospel leads to the adoption of the fashions, customs, and principles of the world. Vital goodness gives place to a dead formalism. So it is lack of Christ in the heart that leads these people to go to the extremes of uh, wanting to be noticed because Christ cannot be noticed in their hearts. Uh, what is the effect of these bad habits on the health? Dear youth, a disposition in you to dress according to the fashion and to wear and uh, hold on a uh, second uh, this is um, we read uh, in uh, MYP 348.3 uh, MYP 348.3, just bring it here, MYP, 348.3, uh, this is what I'll do. Yes. Again, so let us go back to MYP. What is the effect of these bad habits? Dear youth, a disposition in you to dress according to the fashion and to wear lace and gold and artificials for display will not recommend to others your religion or the truth that you profess. 
people of discernment will look upon your attempts to beautify the external as proof of weak minds and proud hearts. Simple, plain, and pretending grace will be a recommendation to my youthful sisters. In no better way can you let your light shine to others than in your simplicity of dress and deportment. You may show to all that in comparison with eternal things, you place a proper estimate upon the things of this life. MYP 348.3. Again, in uh, uh, Councils on Teachers and Parents, page 304, paragraph 1, Instead of preserving their health for the trying emergencies that are sure to come, they, by their own habits, too often sacrifice not only health but life and leave to their children a legacy of war in a ruined constitution, perverted habits, and false ideas of life. How do we judge a person's character? MYP 355.2, Messages to Young People 355.2, and uh, Selected Messages Book 2, page 475, paragraph 2. Simplicity of dress will make a sensible woman appear to be the best advantage. Simplicity of dress will make a sensible woman appear to the best advantage. We judge of a person's character by the style of dress worn. You, you remember that. Uh, 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 Dress is an index of the heart. A modest, godly woman will dress modestly. A fine taste, a cultivated mind will be revealed in the choice of a simple, appropriate attire. The young women who break away from the slavery of fashion will be ornaments to society. The dress and its arrangement upon the person is generally found to be the index of the man or the woman. Those who are careless and untied in dress are seldom elevated in their conversation and possess but little refinement or refinement of feelings. They sometimes consider oddity and coarseness uh, humility. MYP 357.2, are such a women a blessing to the society? In this age of the world, there is an unprecedented rage of pleasure, rage of pleasure, dissipation and uh, reckless extravagance everywhere prevail. The multitudes are eager for amusement. The mind becomes trifling and frivolous because it is not accustomed to meditation or discipline to study. Ignorant sentiment, sentimentalism is current. God requires that every soul shall be cultivated, refined, elevated, and ennobled. But too often, every valuable attainment is neglected for fashionable display and superfluous, superficial pleasure. Women permit their souls to be starved and dwarfed by, by fashion, and thus they become a curse to society rather than a blessing. So they are not a blessing, but a curse to the society. Messages to the Young People, page 357, paragraph 2. Are today's women so bold in fash fashionable sins? Um, spiritual Gifts, uh, volume 4b, page 35, and uh, Spiritual Gifts, volume 2, page 227. Are today's women so bold in fashionable sins? I was shown that some of the people of God imitate the fashions of the world and are fast losing their peculiar holy character, which should distinguish them as God's people. I was pointed back to God's ancient people and then was led to compare their apparel with the mode of dress in these last days. What a difference! What a change! Then the women were not so bold as now. When they went in public, they covered their face with a veil. In these last days, fashions as are shameful and immodest. They are noticed in prophecy. And so the women of old, they were not bold because even their dress was not uh, immodest. But when the dress becomes immodest, women become so bold and it uh, makes them be uh, tempters to sin or uh, themselves they are sinful. The small bonnets exposing the face and head show a lack of modesty. The hoops are a shame. The inhabitants of earth are growing more and more corrupt and the line of distinction must be more plain between them and the Israel of God or the curse which falls upon worldlings will fall upon God's professed people. We shall be found without um, uh, a protector in this um, uh, world that we are living in if um, we um, 
we become immodest. And so how women dressed in Bible times, how women dressed in uh, uh, Bible times. And so here we have uh, some examples of uh, the women of the old. Now, what are the principles? Seeing this boldness, what should we do then? Uh, we see steadily and uh, the tide of evil is just rising day after day, by the way, because of this immodesty. The tide of evil is growing day by day. We see steadily gaining ground in the church and evil which the word of God condemns. What is the duty of those in authority in regard to this matter? Will the influence of the church be what it should be while many of its members obey the dictates of fashion rather than the clearly expressed will of God? MYP 355. Such a madness concerning the changing fashions of the world should call forth an army of reformers who will take their position for symbol and plain attire. Satan is ever inventing fashions that cannot be followed except through the sacrifice of money, time, and health. And so reformers are being called upon to take their position for symbol and plain attire to be a rebuke to these modern uh, uh, fashionable ladies. And so that is the greatest rebuke they can give to these ladies who profess Christianity, but um, and uh, let me say men and women, who profess Christianity, but um, their dress uh, do not match their profession. What the reformers should do is not um, uh, is not uh, uh, is not condemn. By the way, it is to educate, and then they should not hammer the message to anyone. But the best thing they can do is to take their position for symbol and plain attire, which will be a full sermon to this um, uh, pleasure loving. Uh, fashionable men and women in these last days. Should we spend time and money in this scene? We have no right, my Christian sisters, to waste our time and give an example to others who are less able than we to waste their time and energies upon needless ornaments, upon dress or furniture, or to indulge in superfluities in food. So this is ornaments, needless ornaments, needless dress, needless furniture and uh, needless food should be avoided by anyone who is professing to be having the third angel's message. We have religious duties to perform and if we neglect these duties, our time to needless things, we will dwarf the intellect and separate the affections from God. So we have religious duties to perform and if we neglect these duties, our time to needless things we will dwarf the intellect and separate the affections from God. The author of our existence has claims upon our time and uh, our money. The health reformer, June 1873, uh, found in um, Welfare Ministry, page 148, uh, paragraph 1. In the, this is uh, the Welfare Ministry. Now, again, the question is asked, are you really confessing Christ in your dress and deportment, uh, sons and daughters of God, page 292.2? .2. Are we confessing Christ in our daily life? Do we confess him in our dress, adorning ourselves with the plain and modest apparel? Is our adorning that of the meek and quiet spirit, which is of so great Christ, in the sight of God, are we seeking to advance the cause of our master? And um, just to call to our attention one last thing um, uh, concerning the issue of um, dress. Uh, here is um, what um, we have. Saturn as the inventor of these fashionable clothes that leave women and men naked. And so let us look at um, this. Um, this is uh, in uh, Child Guidance, page uh, 426 to 427. 
uh, child guidance, 426 to 427. Tight bands or waste hinder the action of the heart and lungs and should be avoided. Who invented these fashions? That is what we are asking the last question. No part of the body should at any time be made uncomfortable by clothing that compresses any organ or restricts its freedom of movement. The clothing of all children should be loose enough to admit of the freest and fullest respiration and so arrange that the shoulders will support its weight. Special attention should be given to the extremities that they may be as thoroughly clothed as the chest and the region over the heart, where is the greatest amount of heat. Parents who dress their children with the extremities naked or nearly so are sacrificing the health and lives of their children to fashion. If these parts are not so warm as the body, the circulation is not equalized. When the extremities which are remote from the vital organs are not properly clad, the blood is driven to the head, causing headache or nosebleed, or there is a sense of fullness about the chest, producing cough or palpitation of the heart and on account of too much blood in that locality or the stomach has too much blood causing indigestion. And all these things we are reading, headache, nosebleed, palpitation, indigestions, many of them are caused by uh, uh, poor dress dressing. In order to follow the fashions, mothers dress their children with limbs nearly naked and the blood is chilled back from its natural course and throw upon the internal organs, breaking up the circulation and producing disease. The limbs were not formed by our creator to endure exposure as was the face. So your face is not the same as the limbs. The Lord provided also large veins and nerves for the limbs and feet to contain a large amount of the current of human life that the limbs might be uniform uniformly as warm as the body. They should be so thoroughly clothed as to induce the blood to the extremities. Now, who invented all this? We are told, Saturn invented the fashions which leave the limbs exposed, chilling back the life current from its original cause. And parents bow at the shrine of fashion and so clothe their children that the nerves and veins become contracted and do not earn that the purpose that God designed they should. The result is habitually called feet and hands. Those parents who follow fashion instead of reason will have an account to render to God for thus robbing their children of hell. Even life itself is frequently sacrificed to the God of fashion. And so uh, Satan is the one who invented these fashions that we are seeing that they are killing people. Now, think about this. And to 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And so God is measuring. And uh, this is the verse that I wanted to share with us. This is the verse I wanted to share with us, the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Revelation 11, 1 and 2. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, <clears throat> leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto Gentiles, and the holy city shall be, shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Now, the kamas there in the temple are being measured. And the outside is for the Gentiles. So either we shall be Christians or we shall be uh, um, we shall be Gentiles. And so the Lord is in the business of measuring the commas there in the temple, and He is measuring His church by the standard of His word and nothing else. And so, will we conform to the standards of the world, or will we conform to the standard that God is calling unto us? And um, these things. How important, again, are they? If we may just ask ourselves, how important are these things? How important are these things? And uh, I read my last quote. That is um, um, uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 4. Testimonies to the Church, Volume 4, page 648. 47, 640. 
eight and we close at uh, this point. We close at this point. We read, fashion is deteriorating the intellect and eating out the spirituality of our people. Obedience to fashion is pervading our Seventh-day Adventist churches and is doing more than any other power to separate our people from God. I have been shown that our church rules are very deficient. All exhibitions of pride and grace, which is forbidden in the word of God, should be sufficient reason for church discipline. If there is a continuance in face of warnings and appeals and entreaties to still follow the perverse will, it may be regarded as a proof that the heart is no way assimilated to Christ. Self and only self is the object of adoration, and one such a professed Christian will lead many away from God. There is a terrible sin upon us as a people that we have permitted our church members to dress in a manner inconsistent with their faith. We must arise at once and close the door against the allurements of fashion. Unless we do this, our churches will become demoralized. Ed, um, ed, page uh, 246, paragraph 1. No education can be complete that does not teach right principles in regard to dress. Without such a teaching, the work of education is too often retarded and perverted. Love of dress and devotion to fashion are among the teacher's most formidable rivals and most effective hindrances. So you can say that you have a PhD in whichever uh, uh, school that you are in or in whichever profession that you have, but if in your education, until you are receiving of your PhD or your doctorate, you have not been taught how to dress, that education is incomplete. That is how important this matter is. And so may the Lord help us to have the right education, the education that will help us to uh, reclaim what Satan has taken from us and to retain the image, the lovely image of Christ in us, which he has purchased for us, mm -hmm through his blood. Otherwise, may the Lord bless us. And um, may we continue admonishing each other in love as even we see the day of the Lord appearing. Let us provoke each other unto love as we see Christ appearing. Shall we close? Our dear Father, thank you again that um, you are teaching us how to draw closer to thee. Uh, by our own efforts, we shall not make it, but uh, with uh, Christ's victory, we are able to do those things which are impossible with human strength. And so thank you for giving us the strength to walk in the things that we have had in Jesus' name. Amen.